Hello and welcome to another episode of How to Build a Compiler with LLVM and MLIR. I'm Samir and in today's episode, we're going to talk about the abstract syntax tree. Before we start, a quick shout out to the folks who reached out to me and shared their feedback on the video series. Thank you folks, uh, much appreciated and it means a lot to me. Thank you. Okay, let's get started by uh, taking a look at what is an AST tree. What is an AST, sorry. So in the previous episode, we talked about the reader and how parsers actually uh, read from a string of synth, like a gets on a string that contains the source code and convert it into a data structure. And that data structure is an abstract syntax tree, which is an abstract syntactic, uh, syntactic structure of the source code. So like any other tree, an abstract syntax tree is made out of nodes and each node represents a syntactic uh, piece of the source code, basically, or a different syntax in the source code. So as you can see, I already wrote a sudo lisp code here, like two lines of code. In the first line, we have a, we're defining a symbol called main and binding the name main to a anonymous function that returns four all the time. It's a constant function. And in the second line, we're calling a function called prn that basically typically prints out whatever you give uh, give it to it. So in this case, it calls the function main and prints the return value of that function. It's a pseudo code, like it doesn't have anything to do with serine at, at this stage. But if we pass this uh, source code to the reader, it's going to create a, a create an AST out of it. And in the diagram uh, below the source code, as you can see, I tried to map out the AST into a an, uh, diagram. So we have two lines of code. Each line basically uh, get translated into a tree on its own. So on the tree on the tree on the left, we have a list on top, which represents the entire list here. It has three elements. The first element is the symbol def. So def by itself would be a node in a tree, right? So that node contains a symbol and the symbol name is def. The second one, the second element of the list is main. Is it another symbol? Sorry. It's another symbol uh, that the name is main, just like the first one, but the name is different. And finally, the last, uh, the last element in the list is another list. So the last element is a list and it has its own elements. The first element, again, another symbol, but the name is FN an empty list, as you can see, with no children, and a number four. So all of these white boxes are representing a node in, in our uh, abstract syntax tree. Also, the entire tree here, so the left tree by itself is another node in a bigger tree, you know? So we, we, we have two lines here. Uh, we could, I could have actually uh, kind of sort these two trees as a children of another list here. Like I, I could have put them as a child of a parent list, but since that's t uh, technically that's not a correct representation, I decided to not to do that. So here's the first line on the left and on the second line we have two lists like a nested list the first one has uh, the first list and the outer list has a element uh, which is a symbol called prn so the first node under the list is a symbol that the name is prn 
and the second one which is the one in here is a list that has just one element a symbol main as you can see here we don't have any uh, semantic structure so we don't know like where is the function where is the function call or uh, what are the types of different pieces in this tree well, like we don't know any of that the only thing that we know is like how the source code like basically we know the structure of the source code that 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 is it uh we have some nodes and we don't know whether they work alongside each other are they semantically correct or do we have a syntax error here we don't know any of that of course the reader would sanitize the source code to some degree for example if i like remove a parenthesis from here actually i should have removed that parenthesis that was like an extra one and that's another like that that can be a good example if i put a reverted back i put like a parenthesis here so this syntax here is not correct we have an extra closing parenthesis at the end and the reader would actually catch that but for example if i i don't know put four here like put a number here number two here right semantically speaking this is not right two is not a function we can't call number two but as far as reader is concerned as well uh, as far as the partner uh, is concerned this is right so the syntactic uh, syntactic structure of this source code is correct we can have a list that have number that has no, number two as the first element nothing is stopping us uh, from doing that but later on when we get to the semantic analyzer and other pieces of the compiler we'll see that actually we have to catch uh, these type of uh, semantic errors for now let's stick to what we had in here okay so we ended up with a tree of nodes that each node represent a uh, syntactic structure in our source uh, source code no semantic an uh, analysis yet basically the the diagram we have uh, we have here actually represent the uh, setting data settings asc so the node names are correct but to get us started with the actual Im implementation of the asc we have to talk about the abstraction uh, sorry the expression abstract class we have a class in terms of like object oriented programming we have a base class or an abstract class called expression which i'm going to show you um, in a bit this class is the parent class to all the nodes that we might have in series asc so for example in this diagram the symbol list the number all the symbols all the nodes here are a child class of the expression but why i chose the expression as a name uh, it has nothing to do with the ast stuff but i guess it's a good uh time to talk about expressions what is an expression and how it differs from a statement so it depends on the language you're familiar with you might know about expressions and you might not know about expressions Many languages have a statements like, I don't know, a equals to four, for example. So in a language, you might see something like this, right? A equals to three. Here's an state in, in an imperative language, a equals to three is an statement. You're stating that there's a variable called a and its value must be three. So your, uh, kind of assigning the, var the variable a with the value uh, to the value number three. And that's it. That's just an st a statement. And if we want to look at it like mathematically, this is just a, like a logic a state, logical statement. You're stating that a equal to three is true, right? 
But unlike statements, in an expression evaluates to a value. So for example, a, uh, oops, a plus three is an expression. So if we evaluate a plus three, we end up with a value. Depend, uh, depending on the value of uh, a, the final result might, might be different, but there is a final result. Expressions always evaluate to a value, but the statements, they, they don't evaluate into a value. They, they're just statements. They're stating a fact. So we can, like, expressions are actually, uh, if you took a, like, a, a algebra course in high school or whatever, you're already familiar with, like, uh, expressions. All the uh, algebra, basically, is about expressions. And Lisp itself, like Lisp to, is not a language. It's like a framework for languages. It's hard to describe it. It's a, like a way of thinking. It's a, like a mathematical mod model for uh, for a programming language. And Serene being a Lisp means uh, it has to follow certain rules. So one of the main rules in Lisp is that everything is an exp uh, expression. There's an uh, like a asterisk there some of the lisp uh, implementation doesn't follow that rule and the, this rule is not actually uh, really obvious when you read the paper but that being said this is a rule like a this is an implicit rule in the lisp world everything must be an expression so everything has to evaluate into a value and after all, a Lisp is all about reading and evaluating some S expressions or like symbolic uh, expressions. Uh, I'm not going to get into the uh, kind of the uh, theory here, but we might have an uh, uh, we might have an episode about like what is a Lisp and why it it is uh, different than other uh, programming languages and what is the idea the main idea behind uh, symbolic expressions but for now everything is uh, everything in lisp must be an expression and expressions evaluate to a value while statements stating a fact and they don't evaluate uh, they uh, don't evaluate into a value okay let me remove these okay now um it's time for me to show you some code let's start from expression dot h okay so we have a file uh, oh i opened up the wrong file sorry Okay. So we have a file called expression.h in, in the include serene and experts directory. You can see the full path uh, on the bottom, on the center, basically. Uh, here, let me actually, here's the full path to this file from the root of the project. So this header file is actually the main entry for you if you want to read this uh, source code for uh, Serene's AST. Uh, let have, let's have a look and see what's going on in here. Obviously, we have a namespace called experts. What I'm trying to do in the Serene source code is to basically kind of map directories to namespaces. So inside the serene directory each subdirectory would have it on uh, would have a, a name a name space for itself so we have some uh, some uh, type diff and type aliases here that are kind of really important you you would see them all over the place in the source code 
uh, we talked about node uh, the other day on the previous episode it's just a shared point uh, shared pointer to an expression since ex expression is uh, parent class to all the expressions all the nodes in uh, in the ast basically a node is a shared pointer to a type of expression it can be a symbol it can be a number it can be whatever uh error pointer it's the same it's a shared pointer to an error uh we're going to talk about errors uh maybe in the future but for now you can think of them as another type of expression but i'm, I'm kind of avoiding uh I'm trying to avoiding them because it's in my plan, it's in my radar to actually refactor the whole uh, error system and error handling system in the future, in the near future. Um, so it, it's not kind of wise to talk about them right now since they're going to be uh, major differences, uh, major uh, refactoring there. So another thing is uh, error tree which is just a vector or error pointers and since pointer uh, errors are stackable so error can kind contain uh, other types of error and they can uh, stack on top of each other uh, error tree is actually a tree rather than a like a only a vector another important type for us that we use quite a lot in uh, serene is maybe node we already talked about the result type which takes two types one as a success case and one as a failure case uh, and um, maybe and maybe node is a result that the success case is a node and the fa uh, the failure case is actually an error tree so maybe node can be tra translated to and there might be so let me let me rephrase if we have a node that its type is maybe node then in place of that node in case of a success story there would be a node otherwise if there's something wrong in that node there would be a error tree there it might sound a little bit complicated, but when you see uh, how we use it, you, you, you're going to get it. And finally, the ASD itself is just a type def for a vector of nodes. And as you uh, saw in here, I didn't put these two lists as, a chil uh, chil as children of another list here because we modeled them like this. So ASC is just a vector of nodes, right? And similarly, uh, maybe ASD is just the result that the success case is an ASD and otherwise it's an error tree. We use um, maybe node and maybe ASD quite a lot. Also, here's a, like a, a shortcut for us that uh, is an empty node. Whenever we want to have a node that the success case holding a null point pointer. Sorry. Since node is actually a shared pointer, it can be a null pointer. And then we represent an empty node with a null pointer. So whenever in the AST tree that we have a null pointer, uh, that node is empty. Uh, it might sound a, re uh, a little bit strange and um, to be honest, like I don't like to use null pointers anywhere. They're, got, uh, they're just a recipe for disaster. But uh, we have a, me a mechanism to use them in the semantic analyzer, which we're going to talk about in future episodes. And I'm going to show you how we're using them. Uh, obviously, this is just a minimal uh, working uh, version of the compiler and most of these kind of uh, uh, tricks are going to go away in the future when we uh, want to like have a solid foundation but for now it's fine we want to uh, finish up our wiring first okay let's move on and here is the most important uh, piece of code that we're going to go through today the expression class 
as you can see it's an abstract class it has some uh, virtual uh, function members um, by the way um, as i mentioned in the first episode i'm not a uh, i'm not a c++ expert so i'm I'm not used to talk, uh, like terms in a C++ world, so sometimes I might uh, say something that might sound stupid in uh, C++ and I borrowed them from other languages. So please bear with me. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not used to calling, uh, mem uh, calling methods uh, function members, so I might make mistakes at times to times. Uh, okay, so the expression class contains uh, several virtual function members that each member, each uh, node and each expression type has to uh, override them basically. The only thing that the expression class itself handles is the location. So in the previous episode, we talked about the location range. A lo location ra range basically is a data structure that like, contains the starting point and ending point of a uh, expression in the source code right so any expression in the in the ast has to be able like we should be able to find that expression in the source code so for example uh, let's go back to here yeah so the symbol main here the symbol would be a, an object inheriting from the expression so it would have that location range the location range of main would be on line zero from column one two three four five to like i don't know eight right uh, or nine later on we want whenever we want to point to the source code whether there's an uh, exception there or something is wrong we want to print out a, like a stack, a stack trace or whatever we can look into the location to find out where exactly that thing happened in the source code and print it out in the cd out uh, we get to that later again but just to have an idea of what that uh, location range is for and obviously a constructor to initialize the location so we have four uh, virtual uh, function members the first one is the get type the get type uh, it doesn't have anything to do with the type system because we don't have a type system yet uh, then i'm kind of uh, hesitant to change the name because there might be f conflicts in the future but i'm going to leave that decision to the future uh, me right now let's just stick to whatever we have the get type basically returns an expert type uh, enum each children each child of uh, expression basically each subclass has to have its unique get type, uh, expert type so what is an expert type as you can see here we have different like uh expert type by, by itself is just an enum or enum how, depends on how, how you pronounce it that contains several different values it can be either a symbol list number def error fn and call this list uh, definitely will grow in the future but for now uh, we have only these types and again, each subclass has to return a unique value here. Another uh, member function is to a string, which is kind of really obvious, but the only, uh, the only uh, important thing about the to a string uh, function member is that this function is just for debugging it doesn't have anything to do with the actual uh, typecasting in the language it's not any of that so whenever we want to print out an ast in the in the std out we call the to a string function of the nodes uh 
if you remember from the previous episode that we actually test uh, tested the output of the reader by printing out the AST, uh, that's how it works. It calls the uh, to a string function member of each node and ask it to return its a string representation and print it out in the um, uh, std out we have two more uh, function that are really important but we're not going to talk about them today because they're kind of not related to ASD is really uh, the analyze function and generate IR uh, the analyze function is actually used for semantic analyzer in the semantic analyzer, which we're going to talk about uh, next, hopefully in the next episode. I don't know yet. And the generate IR is the function that we use for code generation, like converting the, uh, the AST to the cell IR, which is our first layer of uh, intermediate representation. Uh, the only thing I can say right now is that any subclass has to have override these two functions and provide the logic for semantic analyzer and code generation for their own type. That was the expression interface, quite simple. Uh, it might grow in the future, but for now, since we're uh, looking for a minimal set of features for a compiler, that's all uh, we need. We have several functions uh, here that we talked about uh, earlier in the previous episode, but the, these functions are the main, like the official API to interact with the um, with the ASC. So whenever we want to create a node, we have to call one of these functions and nothing else. Like we can't go around and create uh, the like use the constructor of different uh, expression types directly we have to make uh, we should make sure that we're using one of these functions the first one that we saw in the previous episode as well is make it, it like if you if you're new to c++ this is kind of really weird but if you're a c++ guru you know what it does it it takes like um number of uh, arguments and basically create a shared pointer based on the first type and pass those arguments to the constructor of that type it it might sound weird but uh, an example would like make it easy to understand let's say we want to create a symbol right all we need to do is to do something like this sorry oops symbol and pass it a name because the constructor of the symbol just uh, accepts one accepts one uh, input. So all all it does is the symbol here would map to the type T here, right? So the first type of the template would be symbol, and the rest like is not important here. And we use the uh, basic, like, it would be like, okay, whatever you pass here, I don't care about the type, pass it to the constructor and deal with, the, uh, with, with it there. Uh, that's basically it. Nothing special. And we're calling the uh, constructor of type T here because like make shared uh, calls the constructor of whatever type you gives it to. And forward is basically uh, what I told you. It's just like, I don't care about this kind of stuff forward it to the uh down the line like whatever is there let it deal with it i i don't care and since uh anything that we pass here should be a node so make function actually returns a node here's the um, there's a like a really important uh issue here Mm -hmm. Since we didn't constrain the type T to any interface or any trait, we can pass actually any type here and expect to get a node back. Uh, so if I pass like an int here, it, it should break. But mm, that's like, I can fix that, but it's, it, it's going to be kind of one of those things that we don't care right now since it's 
it's a, like a minimal version it, and we expect it to just work uh, to be quick uh, but just for that i created a um, to do for it to fix it later feel free if you're interested feel free to send me a patch okay uh, moving on the the make function returns a node and if you remember node was a shared pointer to any type of expression so what you get here is an expression right we have another function called make and cast which basically casts the created node into the concrete type so the type t here is a concrete type concrete type meaning that it is uh, it's a type that you can actually use it's not a, like an abstract class so the difference is make and cast returns the concrete class uh, concrete uh, node while the make function returns the abstract node so if you want to use uh, like for example if uh, you create a symbol here with make and you want to use something specific to symbols then you have to cast that uh, abstract ex expression to a node which basically is the same thing that uh, make and cast is doing it creates the node and cast it in place and returns the uh, symbol for you so what you get from make and cast when you're creating a symbol is a shared pointer to a symbol not a shared pointer to an expression and since symbol is a child class of an expression both of them are actually nodes and they can't be used uh, in the AST we have two other functions uh, helper functions one is make successful node and make errorful oh it should have uh, it should have a node here but eh, i forgot about that i have to fix it um so remember we we had a type called maybe node so in the future episode when i'm going to talk about semantic uh, analyzer there might be a situation that our syntax is correct syntax syntactically but is not correct semantically if it was correct semantically we want to return a success uh, type basically maybe node was a type of uh, as you can see here a type of node and error tree and the success case of that thing would be a node and that's what we're doing here so basically make successful node is returning returns a maybe node with a success case that uh, the success ca case guaranteed that contains the success case that's the better analogy and uh, the make error full i should have used node here i'm going to fix it again is the same but returns the returns a maybe node that contains an error rather than uh, a success case that's all it is they're just helper functions that we're going to use later in uh, semantic analyzer um, and finally some really simple functions ast to a string again like to a string for um, expressions it works on ast level you pass it a pointer to the to an ast it prints it out uh to the it returns an string representation of that ast just for uh debugging purposes and a stringify expert type since expert type itself is a uh, enum and enums are uh integer based we want to have an a string representation of them again for debugging purposes and finally the dump function that you give it a reference to an AST, it prints out uh, the string representation in in the studio. Um, if you want to see the implementation of all these functions that we talked about, just look at the expression.cpp file. Uh, it's not much. You, uh, most of them, uh, like we already ha had to define the other important functions here like the make family here since they contain uh, template types templates basically we had to 
kind of uh, implement them in the header files. The CPP file only contains like the debug related functions and those are not important. Moving on, I'm going to uh, show you some, uh, some of the actual node implementations. The first one and the simplest one is uh, a symbol. So as you can see, a symbol is a node in, and is an expression, right? Uh, it inherits from uh, expression. It has just one property, which is a name publicly available. Uh, in the constructor, uh, as you can see, we need to get the location range and then a name. So here is uh, up on, oh, like up until now, whatever we talked about are kind of C++ only. But from now on, we're entering the LLVM territory. We might see some types from the LLVM right now, here and there. But in the near future, we would be all about LLVM and MLIR. But for now, you, uh, what you see here is LLVM string ref, which is a reference type made in uh, LLVM. It's supposed to be really fast and it's a reference type it doesn't own the uh, value if you're interested about uh, this kind of stuff make sure to look at the i'm going to include the uh, link into the in the description but there's a programming manual uh, manual in um, llvm documentation it it's really complex uh, it's really complete it uh, describes everything from different types uh, they provide for different uh, purposes, like uh, different string types, different, uh, uh, I don't know, collection types, array, type, uh, array types, and many other stuff. It's really good to know them, but uh, little by little when we get uh, to use any of those uh, uh, types and functionalities, I'm going to talk about them a little bit as well. So a string ref is just a reference type to run a string. It doesn't own the actual value. Okay, so um, that's the constructor. Pretty simple. Uh, calls the parent uh, constructor to set up the location and finally sets the name. Um, oh, okay. And here is how we can create. A, it, this is like a copy. Uh, copy constructor for the symbol to create a symbol out of another one the get type the two strings and the other two are from the uh, expression interface but here's an uh here's an um here's a important uh, static method here a static function here sorry the class of it wasn't part of the uh interface but all of our uh, nodes have to have the class of uh, implemented in for their own type. What is class of and what what does it do? It, it's pretty simple. If you see the uh, implementation, it's it's actually quite simple. But basically, we need to include class of with the same name into our uh, classes that we want to cast either statically or dynamically using the function, the casting functionality of LLVM. So in the programmer manual, uh, there's a good chunk, a uh, good chunk of information about, uh, basically the static and dynamic casting or uh, cast of LLVM give it a read it's it's really nice basically they try to avoid expensive use of rttis uh, in llvm so they came up with their own uh, casting functionality and it's it's supposed to be pretty fast i never actually um, ran any benchmark or something to see whether it's fast or not i trust uh, the llvm community so uh Basically, how it works is in order to be able to convert and cast a type to another compatible type, you need your uh, your uh, class need to implement a static method called class of, which returns like a 
I'm, I'm going to show, show you the actual implementation, but uh, what happens is uh, LLVM will call that function to determine whether it can cast this function, this class to another compatible class or not. If it can, it will do the job for us. If it can't, it, based on the casting you need, it either, uh, in, for example, in case of a dynamic cast, it either uh, returns a uh, nil or in type uh, in case of an static cast it raises an exception in compile time so um let's have a look at how it works yes symbol okay here's the implementation of the symbol no actually this should be like this i'm kind of assist with using the right uh, using the right syntax here so uh you see the get type is supposed to return an expert type that demonstrate the type or a better term would be uh get type would return expert type that basically returns the type of the current node and the current node is symbol so we just return the symbol value for the expert type you know to a string again as i mentioned earlier is just for debugging we want like the string representation of the symbol should be something like this also talking uh, since we entered the llvm territory llvm provides many like utility functions to avoid using any kind of a third party library in the project in the compiler and their implementations are faster than like normal libraries one of them one of the utility fu functions is format v which is exactly like a format function you pass it a string and provide the placeholders for that string and it formats the string for you also it is compatible with the obviously compatible with the rest of the llvm ecosystem so if you need a string ref here it can cast uh, the return type of format v to an a string ref or other types of uh, strings that llvm has i'm not going to talk about the analyze here but the class of as you can see it should return the boolean it gets an expression a pointer to an expression and we want to know whether uh, the expression that we got is a symbol or not right so what happens here when we want to cast uh, an expression to a symbol right um, i have to show you an example so let's say we have something like this uh, LLVM. oops I have auto shift enabled on my keyboard. That's why I uh, mess up sometimes. So, oops. So if we do something like this, and E1 is supposed to be a node, right? When we do something like this, what happens is uh llvm is going to call the class of method of symbol since the symbol is the type that we want to cast to it's going to call this method here this function here sorry i am again i'm using wrong terminology here it calls a, a class of function the static function on the symbol class and passes the expression to it so expression the E variable here the e argument here would be the e1 uh, here right so what we do here is to call the get type of e if it returns symbol then they are a compatible type we can actually dynamically cast the e input the variable e to a symbol and if it wasn't the symbol then dynamic cast uh, will return null and in in case of a static cast it's going to uh, raise an exception in compile time so 
also there's more functions that we can use uh, in this case like there's another function called is oh it's better to show you uh, in the documentation by the way since i uh, increased the fo uh, font size in my editor the jump you see is because it tries to show some hints and some error messages on the screen but i already zoomed out and um, it breaks basically okay so as you can see there's a function called is a uh, you can uh, like use it like this right so is we a constant or is it an argument or is a global value the global value argument and constant here are types that already have like implemented the class of function uh these are like quite useful functions to have especially since they don't uh, use rtti they're supposed to be really good um and the cost for us is only to implement that function in our node classes okay moving on uh let's uh, let me show you the number uh, node or number expression type it, again it's quite simple it's like super it's like a stupid it's not even simple since uh, at this stage we only care about uh, integers i64 i keep it as a, a string so when we read it from the source code we keep it into like we store it into an, a string and then we cast it to an i64 later like is negative is obvious is float is obvious since even we don't even support float here but uh, i my plan was to support only integers and floats uh, to begin with but i was like yeah that's too much let's just stick with the bare minimum and the bare minimum is integers so in the future we have to change this to a proper implementation but for now it's not our goal to have a proper number implementation numeric impl implementation we just uh, stick with the bare minimum and it's 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 really simple it just it has a function that return cast the number to i64 that's it like two integers basically nothing special and the rest is kind of the same as symbol if we take a look at the um, sorry yes if we take a look at the implementation it's not a big deal it's kind of similar to what we had oh, oh it has a generate ir unlike symbol i'm not going to talk about it today uh it has it needs its own uh time and episode and finally the kind of more complicated uh, node we have one of the most complicated one the list the heart of uh, any lisp so uh again it's an expression but it stores the elements as an ast so list is basically an AST on its own, right? So any element in the list uh, is an expression, in fact, and list itself is an expression. So it can be a nested list and nested ASTs, basically. That, uh, that is what makes an AST a tree, right? Its, its elements can, on its own, be a tree. Um, here is like the copy and move uh, constructor, not important. So we have two, three main uh, constructor. The first one that creates an empty list, it's just gets a location, put it, put the location, like initialize the location and that's it, no element. The second one gets one, a reference of a node, just a single node and use that node as the, like put that node in the, uh, elements here basically right i'm uh, since the type is ast I'm, I'm not i'm trying to avoid any language that might be confusing and finally it takes an ast and a vector of elements and create a list out of it easy right 
Uh, I'm going to show you the implementation in a bit, but it has an append function that gets a node and obviously append that node into the elements in place. Uh, I I really don't like to mutate objects in place, but we're looking like our goal is to have a bare minimum compiler. We don't care like we we take care of these in the future. A count that counts the number of elements that we have. A from function you give it an index of the elements you want, and it returns a new. Uh, like it returns the an AST from that node to the end. Like if you know Python, it would and let's say we have a list call uh, X. We can the from would be exactly something like this here, right? It would be like give me a sub list from element number one till the end. From is doing the exact same thing. Um, okay. We have a new type here, LLVM optional. Optional uh, type is like there might or might not be a value of type ex expression, a pointer to an expression. So we have a function called at, right? We give it an index. The index might be out of range, like our list might contain like six elements and the index might be 10, for example. At that case, since we return an optional type, the optional type is like our result type as well. It might have two values. The first one, the success case, should be an expression, a pointer to an expression, and the failure case would be null, none actually. It would be uh, LLVM none. Did I write it right? Oh. Right? It would be LLVM non the failure case. So, and uh, I'm going to I'm going to show how it works uh, in the source code later on. But basically, when you call the add function, you have to uh, check the result to see whether it holds a value or it is none. And you can do it by a like a simple uh, if. So we have. Uh, we have four functions here that are obviously quite familiar. If you know C++, we can uh, use them to create iterators out of a list and use a list as uh, as an iterator wherever we want, like in a for loop, for example. The other fu function members from our expression interface, and finally the class of the class of a static function. Let's have a quick look at the list implementation as well. List.cpp. Okay. So as you can see, the constructor for uh, copy and move, like this is the copy a constructor we just create a, a new list gets the element from the other list and put them in our own uh, element elements of storage if what if we gets a node this is uh, the constructor to create a list with just one node and finally a list with an ast of elements obviously get type has to return a list type quite simple for to a string, uh, it's quite like simple. We'll, we'll look into our element storage. If we don't have any element, we return a dash. Otherwise, we set the value of s to an empty string. Then we like loop in our uh, element storage and call the to a string function, uh, as you remember, the to a string function uh, fu member function is part of our expression interface. So n supposed to be a node, but right? Elements is an AST. AST is just a vector of nodes, and n should be a node, a reference to a node. So and each node has to be an expression, and expression has this uh F uh, member function so what happens is we just 
concatenate the two strings of our uh, like our elements together and finally we wrap wrap them in a new string to represent a list quite simple i'm not going to talk about analyze again uh, same goes for um, code gen but here's our add function so if you uh, as you can see we check whether the index is bigger than the size of the element or not and since we are using an unsigned integer uh, we don't have to check the negative case so if it was bigger if the index was larger than our number of elements we just return llvm none otherwise we return an optional value with the success case which is a pointer to uh, the element in the right index same goes for from we check the we check the index to be in range and then create a new asd uh like, since asd is a vector we're calling a constructor from uh, a constructor of the vector type and we pass it the starting point and the ending point of our own elements elements is a uh, vector itself so it creates a new ast out of our elements from the provided um, locations and return it otherwise we return an uh, empty ast um, append is quite easy just push back the um, given node what we move here the node here if you're not familiar with c++ um, unfortunately i can't uh, talk about the move semantics in c++ here it it, it needs a complete uh, episode on its own uh, basically to put it simply what what uh, we're doing here is to move the ownership of type n into elements into our own node um, so the current list would be the new owner of the node n here but since uh since uh, node is a shared pointer it's kind of be like okay i own this as well so whenever uh, we want to free node n and read a memory associated with it we look into how many owners it has and if the owner counter uh, was zero then we're free we can free the node otherwise there's uh, an owner pending so we can't free it um, if you don't know about move um, and move semantics in c++ please uh, read about it a little bit we're going to uh, use it um, a lot in the future but for now you can think of it as we're moving the ownership of n uh, giving the ownership of n to the current list so um I guess that's it for today uh we as, like we have more notes to look into but since they're kind of tied uh, with other parts of the compiler like the semantic analyzer and um, code generator i'm not going to talk about them today uh, they need their own uh, time slot so that's it for today folks uh please share uh, your feedback with me also, um, if you're interested in contributing to Serene, please let me know. I would, uh, it would be, it would make me really happy. Um, thanks for watching. Please uh, subscribe to my channel if you like my work, and I hope to see you in the next episode. Thank you.